Mike Dooley, Law of Attraction, Thoughts Become Things, subtitled How to Turn Dreams into Reality, Episode 85 on the Alternative Health Tools Podcast. So today I'm joined by the one and only Mike Dooley from Notes from the Universe. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure, Lisa. A pleasure to be with you here in Southern California. Yes, and I'm all the way from the UK this time. So uh, yeah, it's been an amazing um, weekend and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But just before we get started, for our listeners out there, can we just introduce you, tell them a little bit about you and your story and what you do? Well, pretty conventional background. Um, before I'm doing what I'm doing now, which I'll clarify in a minute, you know, I uh, was an accountant working for Price Waterhouse for six years, and always deep into metaphysical books and reading and my own thoughts about who are we, how did we get here, what's the purpose of life. And for me, at that point, you know, with my accounting background, uh, I just dreamed of being an entrepreneur, ultimately, and using these metaphysical principles, uh, otherwise known as the law of attraction these days. But, you know, we get what we think about. Um, Our thoughts become things. uh, Believe and you shall receive. And I just wanted the truth to live a rocking life. And I did. uh, Six years with Price Waterhouse, ten years selling our own brand of t-shirts and gifts all over the world, sold literally boatloads. And uh, towards the end of that career, if you will, the trends were declining. Um, It wasn't fun. We decided to liquidate, and that brought on a really difficult time in my life. A time during which I wanted to receive inspiration and reminders of the truth. And this is the year 2000 when this happened, and there was no such resources on the baby internet as it was back then. So I started sending out the inspiration I wanted to receive that was reflective of my own thoughts and my own studies and earlier readings about the nature of reality. And uh, those emails that I started sending out eventually turned into notes from the universe, uh, now there's 3,000 notes. There's 800,000 subscribers. Um, it's been the lifeblood of 17 books that I've written and published. Four world tours, Sola Paloozas, Train the Trainer, New York Times bestsellers, and the absolute life of my dreams. And uh, suddenly, <laughs> I'm an overnight success, as they say, but 19 years of work. And um, it's worked in every area of my life. And I look back at the dark night of my soul 19 years ago, and it was really the beginning of the biggest dream of my life coming true, uh, being able to write and speak and teach on the nature of reality, which has always been my obsession, and to, to make an amazing livelihood out of it, you know, with uh, an amazing wife, uh, an amazing daughter, uh, lots of international travel. I say where, I say when, I say how. Um, really, uh, I think... My story is evidence of what I teach, that anybody can do this stuff. Um, Our focus, our thoughts, our words, our actions make it all possible. We're here to thrive. And it's such an inspiration. You've gone from an accountant into, (laughs) you know, an inspirational leader. And all the countries, all the books, and all the lives that you've touched and affected already is just huge, isn't it? Mm. A million miles away from um, the accountancy world. It's kind of uh, hard to even grasp, and it's only when I come to my events like these that I'm reminded of the impact that the work has. Because, you know, as primarily a writer, I'm home writing, Mm -hmm. kind of solitary profession most of the time. But, yeah, it's amazing. These are exciting times. People are hungry for the truth. People resonate with the truth. People know the truth when they hear it. And I also believe that the truth is absolute and it's knowable. And uh, as I shared to the audience the other day, you know, I don't believe it's a fair representation of reality to think that everybody has their own truth. I think that dilutes, dilutes our power, takes steam from uh, what would otherwise be our, our ability to press on and, and live big dreams. Uh, everybody has their own way to mm-hmm. truth. 
But to think, you know, everybody decides what truth is, is, is really kind of silly, maybe politically correct. Every path needs to be honored, and I do respect every path, every religion, everybody's choices. But that doesn't, you know, while there are an infinite number of roads to Rome, none of those roads changes Rome. And in this case, Rome is the truth, and the truth will set you free. We are divine gladiators of love and joy, eternal beings, of God, by God, pure God, pushed on to greatness every single day. Wow. And that's what I live, and that's what I teach, and it works. I mean, person after person in line to speak to me um, has similar stories of how letting go of the past, getting out of their own way. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's not complicated. It doesn't take willpower. It doesn't take hardly self discipline it just takes a dream and Mm -hmm. the audacity or naivety to think that it could come to pass to such a degree you do something about it consistently and one of the key messages i've heard from you this weekend is it's all about the truth it's having that vision and that dream but believing it as well and then taking that little step to making it happen yeah it's just showing up in the world isn't it it's you know the dreams might seem incomprehensible right now so for any of our listeners out there thinking well that's okay for you 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 know maybe he got lucky or you Uh know it Uh can't possibly happen to me what advice could you give to people who are maybe not feeling fulfilled and they they have a dream but they think it's too big that they could never achieve it well a lot of people have a dream and you're right they, they don't have that belief but I, I don't like to tell audiences you need to believe that's too tall a task that's overwhelming how can I believe that me my silly mortal self you know who's negative and fearful all the time could actually get to that place how could I ever believe in that and you don't have to believe in that you need to be grounded in truth and truth stirs in our soul it's in our DNA metaphorically there's so much order in the universe just take stock see the beauty see the miracles see the perfection see the order see the purpose everywhere in nature on this incredibly gorgeous self-sustaining planet in spite of us it's self-sustained so far and then take stock of your own life you know as i've shared on the first night here uh, it's even when i would be going through my own personal life crises um, filled with dread and fear and this ominous feeling that you know i'm going down and the best has already happened I still prevailed. I still took it to another level. How? Uh, I had dreams. Everybody has dreams. But I had a a grounding by that stage in my life. Uh, By age 40, I was 20 years into going within, reading great books. There's an infinite number of great books um, that are out there. Just be led by spirit. Go to a library. You're listening to this podcast, so you're close to truth already. Not just for what I'm offering, but for what Lisa's offering. Be grounded in truth. Remind yourself regularly that your thoughts become things. There's no mitigating factors, not God, not karma, not ancient spiritual contracts. We are of God. So therefore, I say, not God. I'm a total believer in God. I'm the most spiritual person ever, but with zero religion in me. I don't think those two things go together very well, religion and spirituality. But we are we are the playful otters of the universe. We are God experiencing God's creations. So when I say not God, uh, when I say not God decides what happens next, I mean the old school God outside of ourselves, sitting in judgment, frowning, a jealous, angry God. Uh, you know, I don't believe in any of that. that there is no such God in that, those terms but a God that's playful and adoring, that never passes judgment. Yes, there's ugly things that happen in time and space. With with distance, we can begin to see that there's a hint or trace of order, that we're all creators of what we've been through. And so in that way, God doesn't decide. The old school way, God doesn't decide what happens to who next. You know, uh, we are God deciding what happens next. Uh, and yes, there's ugly in the world, but we can get to truth by going within and dwelling on it and realizing first and foremost it's the rare exception it's not the norm the norm is beauty the norm is perfection the norm is love and then we ultimately learn that if there's things we don't like we change the picture in our mind we show up in a new way with different baby steps and there's transformation 
And I love what you say there, we're playful orders of the universe. So is that that we're not alone and we're not trying to do this by ourselves? Is there a higher power or a higher flow of energy that when we kind of let go and just trust? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's all of those things. And to clarify, because I've had enough audience members come to me after a talk and said, what did you say about otters? What's an, you know, otters are known to be among the most playful creatures alive. They just, they do things because it's fun, okay. you know, they play. And so that's my reference, and I'm not alone, saying that we human beings are the otters of the universe. And it, it is because we are of the divine. We have this divine lineage. Um, it's not just that there's a loving God out there, it's that loving God in here, in our hearts. So we're not separated from that God. We are extensions of God. We are the fingers of God. Uh, and we're here by choice in a world we created, in some other realm that we no longer remember for the point of being more fully present now. If we could remember everything uh, and understand that we're always everywhere at once, it would take some of the suspense away. That's where we came from. Now we're here fleetingly believing in the lies of now versus later, here versus there, have versus have not so that we can be inspired, so that we can be driven, so that we can be terrified, and that gets us out of the couch and out into the world where we fall in love, and we are loved, and we find our power, and we live deliberately, and it all starts making sense. And this is the name of the game, not to minimalize uh, life, to say, oh, it's just a game. It's, it, but it is as if just a game, we all return home, we all return restored, we're all going to get a big laugh out of what we took so seriously here, and then we're all going to look at each other and have that glint in our eye and say, let's go back, <laughs> let's, let's go do it fun. again. Mm -hmm. This time I'm going to remember, I'm going to be your best friend. We'll read Hay House books, I joke. Uh -huh. And, um, and uh, this odyssey never will cease. We're eternal beings of light. I love what you say there about having fun and you know, laughter and not taking it so seriously. If you could kind of pick one memory of something that's happened with you in the law of attraction that was fun and it made you laugh, what, what would that be? Well, my best story, if you will, is my life today. And it does make me laugh how, how much I sweat, used to sweat the details and how lost I was and how irredeemable I felt and how negative and fearful I was even when I knew the power of thoughts and I couldn't stop worry. Um, my life is my biggest success story. But one little incident that I share in my book, Infinite Possibilities, came when I first started visualizing with a, a scrapbook, like a vision board. And I dreamed that, you know, if this stuff works one day when I grow up and get old, you know, I'd like to be a very international dude. This is a little guy from Florida. I was. And uh, on my, in my scrapbook, I had a picture of Hong Kong Island as a place that, you know, one day I might go. And truly, I, I thought in terms of, you know, before my life is done, you know, in decades, maybe I'll be a successful business person and I'll have cause to go for fun or work to Hong Kong Island. And then uh, I got hired by Price Waterhouse. I was working in public accounting. I joined the tax department. I was assigned to the Middle East. Uh, and then on one of my home leaves, I was flying around the world the opposite direction. Instead of across the Atlantic, it would be across the Pacific, just to make a fun journey of it. And I had the opportunity to spend a few nights in Hong Kong. And I went to breakfast at the Regent Hotel in Kowloon, overlooking the island. And it was from that vantage point that I realized the picture was taken of the island that later ended up in my scrapbook. And there I am, like, in the photographer's seat. I'm, like, literally speechless. I was all alone, and I never thought I would talk about it one day, but I was just so stunned, like, oh, this stuff works, and I got to call mom, and this is <laughs> unbelievable. Not, and it was two years uh -huh. after I put a picture in my scrapbook um, of that being a part of my life before I was in the tax department, before I was living in the Middle East, before it seemed in any way remotely possible. It just it was just like fanciful thinking, you know, I'll have a, a sports car, a condominium, oh. wildlife, and a picture of Hong Kong Island, because one day <laughs> I'm going to be uh, global. And it was two years later, 
um, that I was actually there. And, uh, and, you know, I could tell stories, and my audience members do tell stories endlessly of things we've micromanaged in our life. And I say that a bit derogatory because I have come to learn through trial and error teaching and living this stuff for many decades that ideally it's not about the Hong Kong Island or the flashy sports car. Those are, those are child's play. Um, but when we're micromanaging, we set ourselves up too often for hits and misses that can be heartbreaking. We try to micromanage a certain person to fall in love with us or a certain job title. What we need to do and what I teach now for all the time success is to have big picture priorities. You know, I want a rocking career. I want wealth and abundance. I want the love of my life. I want a travel partner who really gets me. And, and then without micromanaging any further details, Divine intelligence has infinite latitude to connect the dots for us and pick the right car, the right house, the right career, the right travel partner beyond what our physical senses even showed us as an option earlier. It's still okay to dabble in the minutia and the shiny car and the, the dollar amount, but it's better, more successful, faster manifestations when we go big picture and results like lifestyle, joy, health, healing, and then show up on paths that could avail us of that to the best of our seemingly feeble ability. And then the details and the people that show up will take our breath away. That is a fantastic story and piece of advice. And what I loved this weekend about the Sula Palooza and I'm one of your great events. The biggest thing that I was kind of hearing from you, Mike, was that um, once you have that broad vision... The universe takes care of the house. So detach yourself from the cursed absolutely, house, which is what you talk about. And just let the magic, thriving in a magical universe is a strap line to this weekend. And it's, it's, we often, because we can't see it in the physical form yet, and you're saying that, you know, about the, the Hong Kong trip, it's mm -hmm. like, because you couldn't see it in the physical form and it takes maybe a bit of time to show yeah. up in your life. It's knowing that the universe will take care of it once you've got that big vision. Right. Totally right. And let me add, from speaking to so many people over these years, that's exactly right, 100%, and then follow up baby steps. Because it's not enough to have the vision board and do the same old, same old. It's not enough to, to just dream and be excited about truth. Truth alone won't change your life. Truth with you present, with you knocking on some doors to your... Again, seemingly feeble best. It never, we dream big, but we have a job we hate. You yeah. know, how's that going to make a difference? You know, show up early, ask for a promotion, be amazing. Your clients and customers of your employer will see this. Everybody's going to want some of that. So just be there, show up, baby steps to the best of your ability. Then you become a lightning rod for the miracles otherwise ordained by your big vision, dreams, and end results. I love that. And I love what you said um, this weekend. It's like, and Andy was talking about it as well, is you can't have your vision board in the back of your car and not put the car into gear. <laughs> it's like, if you're not going to take those baby steps like you're talking about, is you're, the vision board's fantastic, but you've got to show up. You've got to, like you say, mm -hmm. go knocking on doors, have conversations with people, and just, yeah, have that trust that, you're doing the right things mm -hmm. and, and what's right for you, what's meant for your true. And when we talk about authentic self, what's in your heart will yes, come to you. Yes, and having yes. that broad vision, like you say, it might not be as specific as to what type of career you want, but if you want a fulfilling career, mm -hmm. the right career is going to find you. And, and I love your journey and your story. And, you know, if anybody out there wants to hear it, where can they, where, where can they find more about your oh, story? Oh, well, tut.com, tut that's T-U-T, like tiger, uncle tiger, <laughs> dot com, is where I send out free daily notes from the universe that are very, very, very popular. Almost a million people get them every day. Um, and from the notes and at my website, uh, I frequently tell subscribers where my next event is. I do speak around the world. Um, I, I draw attention to different books or audio programs that are in alignment with whatever the day's note was. Uh, there's courses available at Hay House, my publisher, that I link to at my website. So everything I do um, is at tut.com. Fantastic. 
So if you're not signed up already, do sign up. I get the daily notes from the universe and they're always timed. They always touch my heart. And it's just a nice reminder to kind of raise our consciousness mm -hmm. and say, what are we focusing on? Are we focusing on the, you know, the, the how? And are we trying to work it all out? Or are we just letting go of the hows and just letting the universe line up and just, just know what we want and, and trust that it will, will come? Yeah, that's exactly right. So I look forward to seeing you again, Lisa. And listeners, you can find out more at tut.com. Thank you so much, Mike. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Lisa. It's been a Thank pleasure you. to be with you. <laughs>